Thank you, Jean. Thank you, everyone. Uh, really great insights and um, really excited to see how these development products will, will be used um, as we move forward and as people get learn more about them. So now we'll, we'll switch gears a little um, and talk about the deployment toolkit. So I wanna take a few minutes to introduce you to the toolkit for inclusive deployment. You can access these from the Data CC website. This toolkit is focused on a patient-driven approach to deploying health measurement products. We conducted expert workshops, Annie mentioned these earlier. So our experts spent four hours in a workshop to help us identify the greatest needs when it comes to deploying a product for healthcare or research. Our experts told us that there's a need for resources for our patients and participants and communities. And these tools serve two purposes. The first is to give clinicians and researchers some insights and recommendations on learning more about people's lives and how this can affect their use of digital health products. Some tools are a guide for developing community partnerships, an inclusive engagement plan. And then the second purpose is to empower patients and participants so they can have a more informed experience. And some examples of these tools include a bill of rights for using a digital health product. So this goes to the earlier question on digital tech literacy and FAQs on privacy and security. Our experts are also asked, our experts also asked us for resources for the clinical and research team. And this second toolkit provides detailed instructions on when and how inclusive elements can be applied to clinical research to the standard clinical research uh, workflows. And some examples of the tools here are a digital readiness assessment tool. So again, uh, attention to digital literacy and access, inclusive communications, because we all know how important clear communications are, and a flowchart for addressing technical issues. And then the third tool is a library of resources related to inclusivity. So these resources sup supplement the ones that were created by the Data CC project teams. Um, and this resource will be a living library. And we invite you to submit additional resources. The goal for these resources is to help us operationalize inclusion when developing a digital health products. I would like to invite Amy, Carrie, Jamila, and Silas to please come on camera and help me share some more insights about these products. Sorry. Thank you all for joining us here today. You have all been very active with these projects over the past year. So who better to tell us the role these pro products will serve? But first, let's do a quick round of introductions. Amy, can you start for us, please? Uh, sure, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, I'm Amy Schoen. I have been participating in this project um, as a consultant to the National Digital Inclusion Alliance. Uh, my day job is as a uh, president and, and digital health equity consultant through my own company, Public Health Innovators. But again, um, I was delighted to bring the digital inclusion world ecosystem, um, as Celine mentioned, uh, in, in conjunction with the digital health ecosystem. Great to have you, Amy. Jamila. Good afternoon. My name is Jamila Jemison. I am a director of clinical development um, for the digital medicine team at MindMed. And Carrie. Hey, everybody. Hi, I'm Carrie Northcott. I am a director and project lead within the digital medicine and translational imaging group that's housed within early clinical development at Pfizer. Thank you, Carrie. And Silas. Hey, good morning. Uh, Silas Buchanan. I'm with the Institute for uh, eHealth Equity. Uh, we are a social impact consulting firm based in Cleveland, Ohio, 
so excited to be part of this process and, and this work. It's, uh, it's critically important. So thanks for having me. Great. Thank you, Silas. Silas, you and I have become friends over the last couple of months. So I'm going to start with you. Um, we know that having these inclusive practices in place is imperative for health equity. But we also know that it's not that simple. And we've heard about that already today in, in with our panelists, as well as with some of the questions. Um, but the deployment product suite emphasize the importance of community relationships and establishing trust when forging an authentic relationship. And Calvin shared some specific examples of just how challenging uh, it is to develop trust. Based on your work with giving voice to local communities, how do you see some of these tools making a difference and helping with building trust and, and being an authentic part of the community? Yeah, so you know, a lot of the speakers, some things that they had to say earlier were were critically important, and I think folks have to go back and listen to some of the things that they they shared. Um, Calvin was was spot on, as was Ernie and, and Renee as well. Um, but fostering trust at the community level um, is critically important, and it, it frankly cannot be uh, be overstated. Um, you know, my organization, the Institute for Health Equity, uh, eHealth, as the name infers, we are concerned about. Uh, an exacerbation of health disparities because of technology. So on, on one side, uh, we spent a lot of time working with the leaders of, uh, of underserved faith and community-based organizations, raising their literacy around the benefits of adapting and utilizing technology to improve health outcomes for uh, individuals, families, and communities writ large. And on the other side, uh, it's important that we work with the ideators and innovators of health uh, tech solutions and the developers of these solutions to assure that they're spinning things up in a culturally appropriate way. So, you know, my organization is, is purpose built um, to leverage these tools uh, that, that DIME has created. Again, honored to have been part of the process to foster the relationship between stakeholders. And, you know, be, because focusing on, uh, on trust and hearing from folks at the community level is paramount, um, you know, we are working uh, currently with Morehouse School of Medicine as well as a national community coalition board. It's a, uh, 25 plus uh, community facing organizations, both secular and non. Uh, but we're focused uh, right now on standing up um, ourhealthministry.com um, as an ecosystem of trusted faith based organizations. Um, we, we all know, right? Faith based, uh, faith based organizations are historically embedded in underserved communities. Uh, and they absolutely want a voice. And it's imperative that they have a voice in the development of these devices. And I think that time is now up, upon us. Um, we know that uh, underserved communities and communities of color are disproportionately impacted uh, by, by health conditions and, um, and they do want, uh, want some say so. Um, the desire of course is to work both secularly and non and the, the tools and guidance um, that's coming from, uh, from DIME will allow an organization like mine and, and others to prepare the soil, as it were, at, at the community level, right? As, as one needs to do before you can plant seeds and expect a bumper crop. So there's a process here. It's not these things exist and then things are magic, the tools exist and then magic things are gonna change. Work still has to be done. And so we're here to, uh, to help do the, the work and carry the water to the community level. So we'll, we'll use the tools and information and guidance to make a difference by just a handful of things. One synthesizing this information and getting it in front of the trusted leaders of faith and community-based organizations. We've already begun that. They know that you know, I'm part of DIME, the DIME Steering Committee and what we've been working on. You know, Two, stressing the importance right, uh, and the potential measurable impact uh, of their direct engagement in, in a process that gives communities of color and underserved communities of any color, both urban and rural, a voice uh, in the development of these tools, trackers, devices, and applications. Um, you know, this is potentially health equity in action, right? This is about leveling the playing field. Um, third, we look forward to working with device developers to assure that they have culturally appropriate marketing plans, right? And, and maybe kick the tires on collateral material to effectively reach uh, communities of, of color. And lastly, it's important that we work across the board to assure that uh, de-identified and aggregated data flows back to local community leaders. And you guys have heard me say this probably ad infinitum, but um, that is critically important so that they have data um, about the impact of, of work that's going on in their, their own communities. So. Great. 